Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 5, Lesson 11, The Human Voice. We're going to start by going over some of the key vocabulary words that you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is variations, changes in amount, form, or level of something. Our next word is voice box, or the larynx. And our last word is diaphragm, the sheet of muscle that separates the lungs from the lower part of the torso and that allows air to be breathed into the lungs. We are now going to move into today's reading. Many weeks passed before Samuel, Jack, Amy, and Ethan were able to spend some time together again. After a long, hot summer, school had reopened and the children were also involved in after-school sports. During that time, Samuel had undergone eye surgery to remove cataracts from his eyes, and Jack now had to wear his hearing aid all the time. The outside world had changed too. Fall had arrived, green leaves had been replaced with a montage of copper, red, yellow, and brown leaves. Gone was the warm morning air, and in its place was a chilly morning breeze. There were many mornings when frost lay on the ground. Everyone was looking forward to Thanksgiving as a joyful holiday to spend with family and friends. It was a Saturday morning, and Jack was sitting in Samuel's kitchen. The two men were playing their weekly game of chess. They had first played chess together when they were third grade classmates. They had not been playing for long when Amy and Ethan arrived and scampered eagerly into the kitchen closely pursued by Alfie. They had come to visit their grandfather, and Amy had some exciting news to share with him. Slow down, slow down, advised Samuel. You'll go crashing into the wall if you aren't careful, he warned. As Samuel spoke, Alfie wagged his tail and promptly sat down on Ethan's feet. Hello, Granddad, said Amy cheerfully. How are you? I'm very well, replied Samuel cheerily. What have you troublemakers been up to? It's almost Thanksgiving, said Ethan excitedly. We're going to sing in a concert at school. You are, are you, said Jack. Well, I hope we're invited to hear you sing. Oh, yes, you are, chimed in Amy. We brought you tickets, see? Amy held up two tickets. It's next Wednesday, and you have front row seats. The third, fourth, and fifth grade classes are going to sing traditional songs from around the world. My class is singing an Irish lullaby, Amy explained. My class is going to sing a French song called Frère Jaca, said Ethan. Sounds very entertaining, said Jack, as he contemplated his next move on the chessboard. You know, each human voice is quite unique. Each voice has its own tone. That's the reason why you can recognize a person by his or her voice, explained Jack. Our voices are as unique as we are, Samuel agreed. Only I have my voice. Precisely, agreed Jack. However, although human voices differ from one another, they are all produced in the same way. They are, said Ethan. Indeed they are, Jack continued, having finally decided to move one of his bishops. If you could see inside your body, you would discover that inside your throat, at the top of your windpipe or trachea, is your voice box. The voice box is also known as the larynx. With your larynx are two bands of muscle called vocal cords. These vocal cords enable humans to make a wide range of sounds. Neat, said Ethan, but how is the sound made? It is not as complicated as you might think, explained Jack. When you breathe in, your vocal cords relax so that air can reach your lungs. When you breathe out, a muscle called the diaphragm moves upward to force air out of your body. When you speak, air leaves your body too. Your lungs and diaphragm force air through the opening in your throat, past the vocal cords. This movement of air causes the vocal cords to vibrate, and so sound is produced. As your vocal cords tighten and relax, different sounds are produced. Check, announced Samuel. What, yelled Jack. Don't tell me you're going to beat me again, Samuel Van Lumen. Jack stared furiously at the chessboard and tried to find a way out of his predicament. Come on, Alfie, said Jack. Let's go play ball. To the children, he said, I wasn't finished telling you about the power of the human voice. I am coming too, Amy announced. And with that, the children and Alfie ran out into Samuel's backyard. The children played with Alfie for quite a while. Then they stayed for lunch with Samuel and Jack. Finally, it was time for them to go home. See you on Wednesday at the concert, said Ethan. You will indeed, said Samuel. I'll continue my lesson then, threatened Jack. Before they knew it, Wednesday had arrived. It was a cool day and rain had been forecast. Samuel and Jack arrived early and took their seats in the front of the school auditorium. 30 minutes later, the auditorium was full and parents waited anxiously to see their children perform. Samuel's daughter, Anna, and her husband, John, had also arrived and were eager to hear Amy and Ethan sing. First up was Ethan's class singing Frere Jaca, 
a traditional French song. Behind them was a large screen with an image of the Eiffel Tower displayed on it. The children sang the song perfectly. Samuel and Jack smiled proudly. I can hear Ethan's voice distinctly, said Jack. Then it was Amy's class's turn. They sang an Irish lullaby beautifully. Samuel nodded at Jack and said, I can hear Amy's voice too, nice and strong. When the concert was over, the family walked together to the local cafe for hot chocolate. They took their seats and minutes later, they were all sipping mugs of hot chocolate piled high with marshmallows. As they talked about the snow, Jack complimented the children on their singing. My teacher says I have perfect pitch, said Amy proudly. What's that? Ethan asked, looking puzzled. Amy was happy to explain. When my chorus teacher is ready for my class to sing, she likes us to start on the note of middle C. Instead of her playing it on the piano, I just sing it. Wow, said Jack. Did I tell you that the pitch of your voice is determined by the size of your larynx and vocal cords? No, you didn't, chimed in Ethan with marshmallow on his top lip. That's why a young child's voice is generally higher in pitch than an adult, explained Jack. The larger your larynx and vocal cords, the louder and lower your voice is. The pitch of your voice is also determined by the tension of the surrounding muscles. Trained singers learn how to control these muscles to produce variations in pitch and intensity. Oh, so that's what it means to train your voice, said Amy. And I bet men usually have longer vocal cords than women, and that's why their voices are deeper. You've got it, said Jack. You and your granddad are so smart, said Ethan. I'm much smarter than he is, joked Jack. Well, laughed Samuel, actions speak louder than words. Jack's eyebrows raised as Samuel made the motions of struggling with a fishing pole. You are both very clever, Amy laughed. I'm so glad we have been able to spend so much time with both of you. Me too, shouted Ethan. The next day was Thanksgiving. Samuel, Jack, and an array or group of family members and friends gathered in Samuel's home for dinner. They ate, laughed, and enjoyed each other's company. They gave thanks for each other and the bonds that Samuel and Jack had nurtured for so many years. You may now move on to Unit 5, Lesson 11, Google Forms.